Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with these nerds. Yeah, hey, Nerdarchist Ryan. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And today we're going to do uh, another DM Tools, what to work on. Before we get into that though, why don't you work your way down to the description down below, click on the link for the nerdy newsletter, sign up, it's a great way to get tips delivered straight to your inbox, as well as learn how to game with us. And you might find like a socket wrench deep down there in that toolbox somewhere. You just might. So, encounters, right? Uh, planning out an a full adventure with all your encounters can sometimes be very pointless and fruitless in your game because you may never ever use them right. in that session. But there are ways to there are ways to use encounters that are more useful. Like for instance, if you you know if you use random encounters in your game, having random encounter uh, tables and charts for all the different areas that your your adventurers could possibly wind up in. Now let's face it, if you're in a desert, you can skip the ocean table right. and the underwater table. But you know you know you might have an aerial encounter. You might have mountains, hills, uh, you know, well, desert. You know, you may have city, you know, or, or urban or village or whatever you want to call it. But you can have tables for each of these if you're using them because no matter what your players do, they should probably find themselves in one of those places. And the great thing is, as as you know, big a tip this is, is once you once you craft them, they're 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 done for the addition. Because yeah. it it's doesn't it doesn't matter what level the party is. A random encounter is something that does not factor in, well, it's a seventh level party, so I need to make this a challenge, you know, equal to them. No, this is something that is going to be on point, underpowered, overpowered, something that they just should not be anywhere near and should be running for their bloody flipping lives. It's all it's all there. Maybe in session zero you might want to communicate that this is a breathing world and not everything I put before you is a challenge that you're meant to handle. Like, you know, you need some real world practicality. Like your character's like, oh shit, that's three trolls. We are not very experienced. Let's get the hell away. Right. right. And that and that's something that you should absolutely you know look communicate. at communicate with, with your players. Um, and hopefully, you know, if they're not listening to that, the third time you totally party kill them and they start complaining, you're like, well, you didn't heed my advice. Do we want to try for round four? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, what makes a world feel more real and breathing is the fact that not everything there was tailor-made for you all the right. time, right? So Exactly. And the another part of that, too, is when you're doing, doing random tables, um, for encounters, they don't you don't make them all combat encounters. Exactly. You know, you know it could be uh, natural hazards. They could be NPCs, uh, which could be friendly or hostile, or maybe they start off in the middle and the players have the have the ability to turn it one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could have a couple of slots on your table too, where like maybe just a couple of those are just marked as like role playing table uh, or role playing encounter asterisks, and then like that leads you to like a d6 of different role playing. This way, you have some ver variety. A chart and you don't, off the chart. You, yeah, you don't exhaust all of your material for that mm. one thing. Um, the other thing that you can do is when you when you make these these things up, you can use as Dave likes to say, you know, or Dave likes to do, is you make index cards or you can make, uh, you know, monster manual entry notations on the chart so you can go right to a prepared encounter. Um, and once you've done that once, don't write all over your index cards. Don't mess up your, your, your table sheet. Those things are resources that you can go back to over and over again. It might not be for this campaign. It might be for a campaign two years from now. You know, so that you can be like, oh, well, I already made the. Uh, and a, you know what? Counter. If you don't want to do that, you can use the cherry pick method. And that is just look through pre planned adventures, things that are online, and just steal those encounters. Mm -hmm. And you could literally, you know, cut them out, print them, whatever, and just make a stack of them that you keep. And you could even do less work, you mm -hmm. know, for if just some printer ink. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Or I mean, copy and paste. Like if you're doing everything digital, copy yeah. and paste, and you have it in the document. Like I, I like to use Evernote. You can actually tag things so that you could actually search through your notes for certain stuff. Like bugbear encounter, fourth level, barbarian, whatever. Like you know, and like your search will yield exactly that note that you have. So it's like virtual index cards in a way. So right. yeah, depending so, on how you do it. Like let, let's face it. Like hundreds, if not thousands, of encounters have already been created. You know, if you can just if you can just find them and, and steal those, then you don't even have to make it. Yeah. But like literally, like even st things like tactics and 
uh, and strategies that the monsters might use may have already even been done and you don't even have to think about that either if you don't want to yeah same thing too like you should just have some back pocket encounters for things like like city guards like city rogues or whatever and like maybe you eventually create a couple of tiers but you just work on the ones that are relevant to your your party right now what they would likely encounter um, but you know you have those and then you just save them and archive them for like the game that you run five years later right. if you're still running fifth edition Dungeons and Absolutely. Dragons yeah there's definitely you can use a lot of this stuff for campaign after campaign uh, and really um, just how you use flavor text can completely change that encounter as well so they right. don't feel like they're fighting the same town guards over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be a squadron of hobgoblins as opposed to human city guards. Just do you explain the, the, the liver, livery that they're wearing completely different. Maybe they have certain tabards and like you just reskin them and call them something else. Maybe you level them up a level or two for an encounter down the road. But you, you have that baseline encounter and your party, if you change the context and like the story of it, they're not really going to be thinking about Oh, this is this encounter that we had like twelve sessions ago. What, just rescan the mean? numbers. All these guys, you know, roll a D eight plus two to damage and have a fifteen armor class. I remember that from such and such. No, yeah. like they're like no one. No one is memorizing your monster stats to you know keep keep track of to you know use except for that later. one guy, that the one, one player. He is. is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He may even took notes. Yeah. On his net, his netbook. Uh, if if you're making notes about you know monsters armor classes and that kind of stuff, you got too much time on your hand. Yeah, or you're not engaged with the story enough, really. <laughs> well, there's that too. I, yeah. So I mean, uh, what else? So with encounters, you could also plan some encounters that are um, potential plot threads that your players might go on related to their characters. Like right. you know, at some point they're probably going to follow up this lead. So maybe just sort of generally have the recipes for what that might be if those characters start to sort of follow well, those stories. you can, but I don't even feel like you need to. Like, say, like, they find the random encounter of bandits, right? Mm -hmm. And you decide to follow that. Well, that's... It's easy to draw a logical conclusion that if there's bandits, there might be a bandit camp. Mm -hmm. You know? So, like, I feel like, uh, you know, you could probably, on the fly, work that out as you go. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you've already had... You already know what your bandits are, so, you know, for the most you part... You just need a bandit captain. You just yeah. need the leader, yeah. yeah. And, and you could just take, uh, in the back, there's that NPC section, there's, like, a pirate captain or whatever, yeah. Yeah, pirate. who does, like, parries and stuff. You, have, uh, you could use pirate captain, gladiator, or veteran. All would all would work, depending upon how strong you want it to be. Yeah. I yeah. know for a fact that veteran is a three and gladiator is a five. So, you know, whatever... How you... bad do you want to kick your party's ass? <laughs> do you want this to be the encounter that they have to run away from? Or, like, that they have to negotiate their, their, their yeah, lives so. out of? Yeah, like, yeah, or it could, it could completely derail your whole your whole session, but that's okay, because maybe they like sneak up on the bandit camp and like, oh my god, there's too many of them. There's you know this place, there's like sixty bandits in here. Or their leader is just a massive badass who like kind of kicks all their asses and like they're fighting one guy and he's like kicking their ass. So they might have to like you know scamper back to town with their tails between their legs and think of another plan. <laughs> they have to commission another group of adventurers. Yeah. Like, look, guys, I we can't handle this. You, the other guys. They, the other, the they, other they guys. They do need the other guys. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Or they. Or this is the unfortunate uh, spot where they realize they are the other guys. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, you know, make, make you make random encounter tables for the areas, and you only have to do it once. Uh, for the areas that you're going to be in. And you don't even have to do this all all at the same time. Like, it could literally be like you're talking to your players and you're talking about the things that they're likely to do. Oh, they're likely to go to either region A or B. Right. Just do those at a time and then build the other stuff in the background. Um, and then, you know, making actual encounters, stealing them from other, other published stuff, taking them right out of the monster manual, but having having those things prepped and ready to go is is gonna is gonna age you when when it's like oh well I need to throw something at them you know am I gonna just flip through the monster manual or you know am I but, but one of the things too though the caveat too if you're going to make the encounters you have to make them generic enough that they're gonna be useful mm -hmm. in most in, in in a variety of situations right so you don't run it because otherwise you've just created that that scenario that where you've made the, it's so specific that it's yeah. only going to come up in this one yeah you, you've made the adventure session that they're not going to do right, right. And, and, and fifth edition really lends itself to a way of you know having as as you guys were talking about that descriptive text changing everything in in, in such a way you know we've got a whole series on the fast and dirty monsters where it's like we're going to take a set of stats and we're going to turn it into something completely different 
Yeah. So one one other thing while we're 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 making yep, yep, random yep. random encounters uh, tables, it's like maybe you do some very loose cartography of like just a couple of kingdoms to like the north and east. Like don't fill in all the little foothills or whatever. But this way you can like seed like little threads of things. It feels like there's a world outside of the boundaries. So like they just know like the next kingdom over uh -huh. like either which direction. But you don't put in like every other almost little... like the points of light from fourth edition. Right. Right. So this way. You know, like now, like they uh, they start asking about uh, ruins. They want to go explore ruins. Well, we can decide where we're going to put this in our loose cartography right, right now. So that that goes with sort of like having a regional um, regional sort of random encounter table uh -huh. is knowing a vague direction of what's what what's your region around. what your regions are right. and what's around. So yeah. what what do you guys think? You know, uh, in regards to prepping encounters and random encounters put your thoughts and feelings down below while you're at it like share even subscribe check us out on nerdrucky.com you can check out nerdrucky the store so until next time stay, stay nerdy, nerdy.